now available on Instagram. I'm Jasmina and this is Apartment of Style, the show where we talk about stylish things while sitting in my apartment. Well, we're inside my apartment. We're joined by my friend David. Welcome, David. We're talking about stylish things. And if you like stylish things, you should probably subscribe and ring the bell. Okay, let's move on from that and now transition into what we're talking about topic-wise. Menswear, spring, summer 22. Wow, 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 wow. 2022? Oh. No, it was just like the year 2000 and I was born. It was like, whoa. If 19, you were born 80. in 2000, you would be 21 years old right now. Which is right, which means right. We're only talking about good shows today because it's just a waste of our time to talk about bad shows. Let's get on with the good shows. Here we go. We're doing it. Okay, starting with Dior Men's. Dior Men's creative director, Kim Jones, is no stranger to artist collaborations. And it is these collaborations that have helped him transform and revitalize Dior Men into one of the most sought after menswear brands. Jones's latest collaboration for Dior Men's Spring Summer 2022 is none other than Travis Scott, who by the way, is the new fashion it boy. Did you just see Travis Scott was featured in the new Bottega Veneta Zine. Very cool. Very, Very cool. cool right now. He did a McDonald's collab. Did anyone mm -hmm. try the McDonald's Travis Scott he meal? Did that I didn't do that, but I just like what I like in McDonald's. I don't really need to eat what Travis Scott he likes at McDonald's. Sprite, first of all. I do Diet Coke. Travis Scott is also the CEO and founder of Cactus Jack, which is his record label and creative collective that has already done numerous collaborations. So this Spring Summer 22 Dior Men's Show is the first show that I've seen that had an actual audience. Besides like Kristen Dunst alone. K Kristen Dunst alone? If you cannot separate Kristen Stewart and Kirsten Dunst, who's not even a Kristen. Hi. The stage was this larger than life cactus garden with a projection of an ombre sky in the ceiling. The set was designed to mimic Christian Dior's childhood garden with a mix of cactuses that are reminiscent of Travis Scott's childhood in Texas. The clothing was inspired by Scott's own personal style, and the color palette painted a picture of Houston, Texas, with its pink sky, green cacti, and variations of earth tones. John Galliano's saddlebag is transformed into a handheld double saddle. It feels more Western inspired than ever, which very much fits in with the Texas theme. Double-handed saddlebag? I thought was a little purse-like. Well, I think the one thing that I notice in all of the collections we're gonna talk about is gender fluidity is really happening. A purse for a man is not a strange concept. Get ready, boys. We wanna see legs, we wanna see halter tops, we wanna see crop tops from you, get ready. The famous Dior Oblique logo is transformed to say Jack instead of Dior, which is Travis Scott's company, Cactus Jack. I thought these oblique print pieces were really genius. They made me think of a knockoff sweater, but reimagined by the luxury house. Every model came down, I don't know if you noticed that, with a brooch that was a, a brooch, cactus. Yeah. Some were connected to the hats. I'm guessing in case you want to take your hat off, it's still connected to your jacket. I love the silhouettes of all the garments, especially the slim drapey suits with a slightly flared leg silhouette and Nehru collar jacket. They felt elegant and easy. The, the pants, the silhouette is flared. Uh-huh, it's slightly flared. That. I think it's a very Travis Scott thing and I think he really pulls it off. And honestly, all those models pulled it off. I would pull it off myself too and I would totally rock it. It's a very, I'm a Zen person suit. I meditate suit. Mm -hmm. I'm centered. You're on like next level of mm -hmm. thinking if you have that suit. And I want to be on the next level That's of thinking, true. David. The earth tones were exciting. I don't usually say that about earth tones, but in this case, yeah. I was really drawn to them. Snake prints also made an appearance, hence the desert theme. There were all these fabulous intarsia ghost sweaters that were all drawn by Travis Scott. I also loved all these boxy overshirts, which were actually printed with designs by American painter George Kondo. 
These will be auctioned off to raise money for Travis Scott's charity. He's partnering with Parsons in New York to send kids to design school that would otherwise not be able to go. The collection was just fabulous and a great example of a successful collaboration. But I think it also marks a new way a luxury house works with a celebrity. In the past, celebrities have been used by luxury brands as the face or simply just an ambassador, much in the way Travis Scott is being used by Bottega Veneta for their zine. But the Travis Scott and Dior collaboration really marks a new chapter in collaborations, where celebrities are much more than just the face. They are the creative force behind the luxury brand. I do think that this is the future of celebrity collaborations, but there are not a lot of people that can do what Travis Scott did with Dior. But there are also not a lot of creative directors like Kim Jones who can guide Travis Scott to do this collaboration. So I think it's a special moment as well. Mm -hmm. Post Malone for Dior, I don't see it. I don't see it either. Louis Vuitton, my headline was Beautiful Chaos, romantic. Beautiful Chaos, you're a poet. That's how I felt about it. Virgil said he let go of his idea of editing the collection into a narrative story like he has in the past and instead let himself explore the million ideas that surround each collection. His show notes were like 40 pages. Yes, so many references explored in the show like gender, chess, martial arts, hip hop and rave culture, to name only a few. And in the show notes, he calls for an end to ideas of male and female in favor of a human approach to dressing. What everyone else is also maybe not calling to, but just showing us. He, he said antiquated ideas like dress code and gender fade away in favor of a universal call for peace and love. And that is the future. Peace and love is the future, I hope so. Suits came in rose pink and soft blue, tied with matching belts. There were more suits in shades of neon greens and pinks. The theme of chess and its various motifs are explored using the icons of the game and in the silhouettes of the clothes themselves, on Rook, King and Queen. With the hat mm -hmm. and the cape and the way they were kind dressed. Polar opposites in dressing was explored. Tailored suit and a tracksuit blended together. There were tailored jackets with leaves of a tracksuit on them. Tie-dye puffer coats that were paired with matching tie-dye A-line skirts. Those were beautiful. Referencing Japanese samurai armor, there are garments outfitted with padded sleeve and shin guards, even padded skirts and enormous padded gloves. And the bright world of raves was referenced. I really appreciated the flow and rhythm of the collection. When you look at the actual show, 1 through 22, there's more of a classic color palette. Then neon green is introduced, and from there it goes into wild pinks and yellows and greens. And, and all the ombre. Then it starts, yeah, mutating into the rainbow gradients, which is for me the best part of the collection. That was my favorite part too. But I also loved all the quiet looks, like the all white look with the white coat. Mm -hmm. That was just a palette cleanser. Also, the pins. I don't know if you noticed, mm -hmm. there were airplane, airplane pins, pins, which we mentioned at Dior, there were the cactus pins. Mm -hmm. Then when you really look at all the details, the shoes, the bags, there's just so much. Riddler bag uh, stood out to me, which was a yeah. key ball uh, with the, the key ball Riddler mark, bag. And That's it took me cool. back to 1995 Batman. The highlight of this collection will probably be remembered as the the introduction of the Nike Jordan collaboration with Louis Vuitton. With Louis Vuitton, yeah. it was definitely my favorite menswear collection for spring summer 2022. Me next, Fendi, designed by Sylvia Venturini Fendi, was presented in a visual film slash runway at the Palazzo della Seville. Ilta Italiana, a beautiful neoclassical building in Rome, which is also the home to Fendi. Mrs. Fendi stated, when you are on the top of this roof, you feel that life is beautiful and that the world is beautiful. I feel optimistic. It's like an observatory. You see everything. This Spring Fendi collection is all about optimism and a sense of freedom, exactly the opposite of the state of the world during the recent global pandemic. The color palette was soft and probably my favorite part of the collection. Pastel greens, lavenders, and blues mimicking a romantic sunset, as well as an array of luxurious neutrals that just looked expensive. The softness of all of it was very reminiscent of Fendi's Spring Summer 21 women's wear collection. It was almost a continuation of all those ideas. It was a very gender neutral collection. Then again, that seems to be a reoccurring theme in many menswear collections this season. After all, what is gender but a social construct? Lots of crop tops worn with suits and shorts, as well as cropped suits and cropped cargo pocket jackets. 
To come to think of it, cargo pockets were everywhere, even appearing on sleek linen trousers and short shorts. Lots of versions of the Fendi baguette, but mostly shrunken and worn cross-bodied. Fendi always knows how to do accessories, and this season did not disappoint. My favorite being all of the sandals, so many options, and I love the matchy-matchy suit-sandal combos. There were a lot of fancy Italian classic man looks, as well as not-so-classic looks. They were just as elegant. Some of my favorite pieces were the soft watercolor-like prints that were printed on organza coats, trousers, as well as melding of these colors on intarsia knits. The show transitions from these soft pastels and neutrals into black, just as the visual runway video transitions from day to evening. That was very cool. Yeah, I just thought this whole collection was beautiful and cool and I love the way it was presented in the video. I love that we really saw the pieces and the looks, but I loved seeing the Fendi office building. The way it was shot was beautiful. The music was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Any man who would wear any of this would look very chic. I think that the cropping was done in a good way. Like mm -hmm. it was the right, it depends on where you go. On the runway, the cropping was shown with just the jacket crop with bare stomachs. But don't you think that in real life, guys can actually wear those crop jackets with yes. shirts underneath? And like a cool? Yeah. I mean, it is so gender neutral to me. It's I'm shopping from my own closet here, mm -hmm. 100%. It's like Italian linen summer. But Love futuristic. It. But futuristic too. Let's talk about Burberry. Let's do it. Sandy Dune was the set of the Spring Summer 22 collection. It looked at first apocalyptic, but it became clear that this is a rave. Overall, the palette was limited, pulled from the iconic house's Nova check. Each of the four colors of the check was given a monochromatic look. Beige, white, red, and black, accented with the sky blue, a reference to what Tishy said was the only thing we've been able to watch while trapped in lockdown. Leather was a reoccurring theme in the collection. Black leather appeared as trousers, apron style tops, sleeveless hoodies, halter neck vests, even briefs. This feels like Ricardo Tishy's most personal collection for Burberry to date. Yes, there were trench coats and car coat references, but it's very clear by the facial piercings that this was Burberry learning Tishi's language and not the other way around. That's also made evident in the way traditional classics were dissected, spliced, cut away and reassembled into something new. The look of the collection is architectural and experimental with cutaway peepholes and tabs accentuating the body. Halter neck trench showed off toned shoulders and biceps. The classic gabardine trench coat was sliced across the clavicles to resemble something more like an apron. An abstracted hourglass bib was worn over bare skin. I'm loving these looks, but not everyone's for me. Would you rock a halter trench? Could I layer? I would wear a white shirt because I feel like it's more about the shoulders on a halter. I myself don't really like halters on myself. Even though I have broad shoulders. They're naturally broadening. That's the they issue They actually with them. broaden my shoulders even more. If you have bird shoulders, you should be in a halter. Birds would look so cute in halters. They're meant for. It. Everyone's sexy too. That's the other thing we've noticed. It's a very much a gender fluid show, just like all the other shows that we've it's seen. It's funny though, because it's also hyper masculine and not every other show is yeah, that Yeah, and it's too. sexualized. It's sexy. Everyone's gazing at everyone now. I think after quarantine, everyone's looking for sexy time. Everyone wants to be sexy. Everyone wants to see see sexy people and they want to be with sexy people. Kishi said, I wanted the collection to capture that free spirit of youth and its honest and daring attitude. Optimism, Freedom. joy, utopia. Tishi was reflecting on his time in uh, his early 20s when he was going to raves in India, and he wanted to bring that energy to this collection. I know J.W. Anderson for Loewe was saying raves. That Virgil. Partying. Virgil talked about it too. It's just, I guess, a party is in the air and sexy things are in the air. Those things are in the air. My last show today is Prada. So the Prada Spring Summer 22 menswear collection, just like all of the Spring Summer 22 menswear collections, was looking towards optimism and joy. It's pretty much the underlying theme anywhere and everywhere right now. The collection was presented in a video runway format with the models walking through a red tunnel. In the first few looks, we only see the tunnel. A few minutes into the show, we discover that the tunnel leads to the beach, a utopia. I guess a metaphor, going through darkness and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, body inclusivity hasn't really hit men's fashion. No, body inclusivity has definitely They're all not Prada hit the skinny bitches, market. I saw that, I was like, oh. And that needs to change because men come in all shapes and sizes too. They're different shapes in micro shorts. Yeah, I want to see everyone in micro 
micro shorts. And guess what? Prada is telling us that every man should be in micro shorts. Not so every man though. They're saying only this like <laughs> teen boy should be in micro shorts. Yeah. So if you're wondering what Prada wants you to wear, it is shorts. And they're very, very short shorts. This collection felt very gender fluid as well. It never felt overtly masculine or feminine. It just felt like Prada. And it definitely did look back at old Prada collections. There were numerous self-references. The main stars were really the accessories. Pretty much every model had on a bucket hat. For this season, they were updated with V-shapes in the back and a little triangle coin pocket, a chin strap, as well as holes in the front so you can put your sunglasses through. Very practical. In your windy bucket hat, you can't ride in a convertible. I really way. want one of those bucket hats. I have my eyes on the striped ones and I love the idea of pulling my sunglasses. All these stripes made me think of a fabulous Italian holiday. The bags and the shoes also felt very gender neutral, simple and holiday ready. The vibe of the whole collection was just a fabulous beach holiday. And that is definitely something we are all ready for. You know my thoughts on those short shorts. They Not were rolled. They were rolled. They were rolled. Which means you can style them I wonder short what, or not. I wonder what their full capacity is. It would be cute if they were at the knee too. People are referring to specific inseams. They don't like guys who wear more than a five inch inseam. Who are these people? The ladies of TikTok. Women? They say their Prince Charming can't have no shorts longer than five inches. These single gals are telling it's you It's all been started, stuff. I think, by Milo. Well, he, he's representative of it. Milo Ventimiglia from Who's that? This Is Us with his hot legs that got up on the scene. Oh, Go. Milo Ventimiglia. Ventimiglia, uh, Mandy Moore's husband and counterpart on This Is Us. His short I've never shorts heard of and this his person. thighs was a sensation and kind of brought short shorts to mainstream culture more than Prada has. What? This is crazy. He You're did saying more to crazy popularize stuff. short shorts. So tonight. are you rocking the short shorts or not? Um, well, I want to roll them down and see where we get. Yeah. One, two, three. Bye. Bye.